Oh, God, nice and quiet. Good morning. Welcome to St Mary's on this lovely Sunday again. Um, please look at your notices and go through the few items that are in the notices. I should remind you that this coming Tuesday is Jonathan Pragg as a lunchtime concert. But it wouldn't be right not to say thank you to everybody who was involved in yesterday's gala. <clears throat> Excuse me, a wonderful success. The tea rooms and the outside catering that we did, that raised over £2,000. So that's well done on that. Well done for everybody who's working in the tea rooms because I think they did a few miles. The step numbers were up, weren't they? Yeah. Um, and it was just a great success. Special thanks to Ron. I mean, Ron is a sterling, does sterling work. I mean, back and forwards with tables and things. And also, I know he won't want me to say it, but um, Ray did a great job making sure we had their electrics and power and things were in the right place and water, etc. So, and it's just um, thank you to everybody who was involved in yesterday. It's, it's, a, it's a really, it's a great outreach as well as a fundraising event. So thank you all. So have a couple of minutes of silence now. Enjoy the service and uh, we'll see you all after the service.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Would you sit, please? And a welcome today here for each one of us as we come into the presence of the Lord and we celebrate our Lord's transfiguration today. That moment of realization that can be ours, as the wonder and the greatness of our Lord and of his love and everything for us. So we share today in this moment of remembering, of celebrating, and of challenge that that brought, obviously for our Lord, but for ourselves. So let's, in the quietness of this moment, pause and prepare our hearts before the Lord as we sing together, Almighty God. Sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God.
would you turn to your notices and let us pray together the collect celebrating the transfiguration of our Lord. Father in heaven, whose son Jesus Christ was wonderfully transfigured before chosen witnesses upon the holy mountain and spoke of the exodus he would accomplish at Jerusalem. Give us strength so to hear his voice and bear our cross that in the world to come we may see him as he is. Amen. Would you sit for our reading? The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 7. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven, and he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. A reading from the second letter of Peter, chapter 1. We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honour and glory from God the Father, when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed you will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter did not know what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud, cl a cloud, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wonder if you, like me, are a little puzzled by the story of the Transfiguration. Not the story itself, but where it comes in the life of Jesus. What we've heard up to now is an account of his interaction with the ordinary folk and the religious hierarchy. Questions being answered by stories, stories of people's everyday lives, ploughing and sowing, sheep and shepherds, agricultural workers and grapevines, fish and bread, rich people and poor people. The sick and the troubled are healed or liberated. Everything is very earthbound, isn't it? But up a mountain we are now, and the company Jesus is keeping is very different. This time the story isn't earthbound at all, it's rather otherworldly, something so mystical that it almost feels as if it belongs the other side of the resurrection. But here we are. So it's helpful for us to reflect for a moment on where this event comes in the timeline of Jesus' ministry. He started preparing the disciples for his death. He knows what he's going to have to face. He's challenged the values and priorities of the authorities of his day. He has shown that his values are not their values. His focus is the kingdom of heaven. But even those closest to him, his disciples, manage time and again to fail to understand who he is and what it is that he's showing them. He tries to tell them time and again what they don't want to hear, the inevitable end that awaits him at Golgotha. Dark times were coming, and there must have been a real sense of gloom. Jesus asks them, who do the crowd say I am? And they answer with famous names of the past, John the Baptist, Elijah, even Jeremiah. And then he asks the most crucial question of all, who do you say that I am? And of course, it's dear old Peter who answers. Peter, with his brilliant flashes of revelation and understanding, so often replaced quickly by confusion, fear or bewilderment. 
And in this instance, he comes up with the goods, the Messiah of God. And after this declaration, Jesus makes it clear to Peter and to us that this realization of who he is is a gift from God, not revealed by human flesh. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And so a little time has passed since Peter's had his revelation, and Jesus takes his three closest friends on a trek to an unnamed mountain. Now, that's not a particularly surprising thing. Jesus made a habit of going to remote places in order to pray and to listen to his Father. Perhaps being fully human, he valued the company of close friends. Or maybe there was something he particularly needed them to see on this trip. When they get to the right spot, exhausted from the travel, suddenly everything becomes brilliant and blinding. Jesus is transfigured in front of them. He's no longer the tired man who's walked miles and miles, who has been pushed and pulled by crowds, who is carrying the weight of what is to come on his shoulders. Rather, he is a shining being that doesn't seem to be of this world. He's bathed in glory. Now, once their eyes become accustomed to the brightness, they see two figures near him. Now, interestingly, at least to me, is why did they think the shapes were Moses and Elijah? There were obviously no photographs, no paintings, no sculptures of these two great people. Did Jesus call out to them by name? They couldn't have recognized their faces. And if they represent the law and the prophets, why imagine one of them is Elijah rather than the greatest prophet Isaiah? We simply don't know. Perhaps we might suspect that the reason is because not many days ago, they had told Jesus who the crowd thought he was. And perhaps these names are embedded in their heads. Regardless of the interest, we assume these two greats were encouraging uh, Jesus to face what was to come. And now dear old Peter shows his colors again. He wants to cling to the light. And who can blame him? Below the mountain, the darkness and the dangers are approaching. The early heady days of ministry are gone. The religious authorities are out for Jesus. And Jesus keeps trying to tell them of his own impending death. And when you don't know the outcome of the story, what the immediate reality for the disciples must have seemed like was failure. So, quite reasonably, let's stay here, thinks Peter. This is so much better. Here is light and beauty and safety among heavenly beings. Jesus is finally where he belongs, in the kingdom of God, which is bathed in light. And Peter doesn't want this moment to stop. And I wonder how many of us pray for something similar, for the joyful times to linger, for the people we love not to die, for illness to be lifted from us, for darkness and depression and sadness not to return, to be in a place where young children are not stabbed as they dance, or wicked people using that attack to sow misinformation, division and hatred. Don't we long for the dark clouds seemingly gathering around the world to be dispersed, to be replaced by peace, justice and light? And there's even more. A voice calls out from heaven, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Terrified, they fall on their faces. And then just as suddenly, they are back. And Jesus looks always as he did. His time hasn't yet come. The cross cannot be avoided. They will go down the mountain and he will set his face toward Jerusalem. So why did this moment of transfiguration happen? Matthew's gospel calls it a vision. And they must have wondered as they came down the mountain, what have we just seen? Did they think of it when they saw him carrying his cross through the streets? Peter certainly remembered it and wrote it in the letter we heard today. And perhaps after the resurrection and his appearances to them, they remembered that moment on the mountain and understood. But again, as with so many details in scripture, we'd like to know, 
but we're not told. It's very possible the transfiguration happened because Jesus needed it. His three friends were just there to witness what had happened. Whatever it was, it was an experience really powerful. What was awaiting Jesus was a horror beyond words, not just on his physical body, but in the terrible abandonment he felt on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I think his humanity needed those moments of encouragement on the Mount of Transfiguration. Many of us face times in our own lives when we believe darkness is heading for us. Maybe that operation is coming up, or we're waiting on test results, or the doctor's given us bad news. Perhaps we've trashed our relationship, or wrecked our careers, or alienated our children. Times when only a few brave friends accompany us. And it's then we need to take time with Jesus, time in his light to get a glimpse of his transfigured glory to strengthen us then maybe these painful transitions for us will become points of growth and change. Things we eventually look back on and decide we wouldn't, to change, wouldn't want to change even if we could, because God has still made use of us and has shown us too many things along the way. But that's a talk for another day. Peter wanted to cling to the light, to stay in the moment, he didn't want that light to be extinguished, but it needed to be, because an even greater light would shine, the light of our risen, glorified Lord. And when the darkness approaches us, may it be to that light which we cling. Amen. Let us stand and confess the faith of the church and ourselves. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us sit or kneel for our prayers.
Lord our God, we give thanks for the church, for the fellowship we have with our Christian brothers and sisters, for good times and sorrow celebrated and commemorated in this place. Keep your Holy Spirit with us and support us in our mission with the local community. We give thanks to the team who ministers for us and especially for Ian and for all of his hard work to lead this church and channeling your Holy Spirit in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we gather, gather before you on this Transfiguration Sunday, grateful for the light of your presence and the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ. As we reflect on the miraculous transformation of Jesus on the mountaintop, we ask for your divine light to shine upon us, illuminating our hearts and minds. Just as Jesus revealed his divine nature to his disciples, help us to see your glory in our everyday lives. Transform us, O Lord, from the inside out. Let our lives reflect the radiance of your love, grace, and truth. Grant us the strength to follow Jesus, even when the path is difficult. May we open to the transformation you wish to work on us, trusting in your guidance and wisdom. Fill us in the Holy Spirit that may, we, we may witness your love and power in the world. We lift up our prayers for those in need, for the suffering of the lost, and for the world that longs for your peace. May the transfigured Christ inspire us to be agents of change, spreading your light in places of darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our communities across the country where people come together in fellowship from many different beliefs and cultures. We give our thoughts and prayers, though for places where the peace and harmony that we crave has been devastated. We especially remember all of those affected by the terrible events in Southport this week. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all of those who have lost loved ones or have injured relatives in hospital. We pray for an end to this hatred from individuals, that all of us, and especially the children, be protected from violence and hatred. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all sacred places around the world where we can worship you, Lord. We specially give our thanks for this holy building. Help us to keep it fresh with your Holy Spirit, that we may honour God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Help us to channel your still small voice in this holy place, that we may always be doing your will. We give thanks for your sacrifice upon the cross and your glorious resurrection, and for your intercessions for us at the right hand of your Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in Ukraine and the Middle East. We cannot help be, but be moved by the violent pictures of conflict that we see on our televisions. And we pray for an end to war and violence and for the world leadership community to work for lasting peace between these people. Give leaders the strength and purpose to look for lasting solutions that provide hope, freedom, and normality for all sides in these conflicts. We pray for the ability for all warring sides to settle their differences, to look for solutions to what are complex problems rather than continuing with war, conflict, and persecution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we give thanks and praise for the beautiful world that you have gifted us. We thank you for the bright summer days and for all of the beauty this brings. Help us to protect and look after this gift you have given us and never to take it for granted. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for all of those who are struggling with illness, pain, distress, and those suffering in body, mind, or spirit. May your healing hand be upon them, and may they find comfort and hope in your presence. At this time, we especially pray for all of those who have asked for our prayers. Risen Lord, we give thanks to the lives of those who have died in faith and now rejoice in your kingdom. Wrap your loving arms around all who are grieving at this time, whether due to recent loss or because of an anniversary which falls at this time. May your comfort and peace uphold them as they mourn. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. And in a moment of silence, we offer our own prayers, thanksgivings and intercessions. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before I invite you to stand, a certain young lady has a birthday today. Janet, am I allowed to say how old? <laughs> 21 times whatever. Yes. Yeah. 86. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, and bless you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. Now we come to the peace. Okay, so what do you say? <laughs> we are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will. These gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. When we, we eat, eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate the memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you send the holy spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of St. Mary and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partakers at his table reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we pray together. Strengthen for service, our Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears that have heard your word be deaf to clamour and dispute. May the tongues that have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes that have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be replenished with the fullness of your life. Amen. I publish the bands of marriage between Benjamin Lee Pacey and Katrina Alice Smith, both of St. John the Evangelist Gosport, and between Geordie John Henry, uh, Henry Ridley and Georgia Rose Plumley, both of St. Paul's Bursleton. These are for the third time of asking if any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other. You are to declare it now. Let's hold them in our thoughts and in our prayers as we remember Benjamin and Katrina and Geordie and Georgia. May the Lord bless them in their wedding and in their life together. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's sing our closing hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Crown Him with Many Crowns
The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all you love and remember this day, now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, In the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.